everyone. Welcome back to Pivot by Faith. I know you were here for the last episode and like me, you were probably anxiously anticipating the next time that you would see another phenomenal guest on this podcast. And I'm telling you, you are going to be excited about this. Anybody who knows me has heard me talk about hydroponic gardening and some people have given me strange looks and you're saying, Denise, what, what is this hydroponic gardening you're talking about? Well, I have someone here that is going to tell everyone what this is and to, to share with you the benefits and the thrills of this kind of gardening and this kind of lifestyle with the hydroponic gardening. Today, we have Mr. Greg Crafter, and Greg is here with his business, is produced for all. And I want him to share what he does and who he is with you. And so I just want to welcome today, Greg Crafter. Welcome, Greg. Well, thanks, Denise. Thanks so much for having me as a guest. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. But thank you, Greg, for being here. And so first of all, I want to not delay this exciting content any longer. I want you to jump in, Greg. Please tell everybody who you are and what you do. All right. So as you said, my name is Greg Crafter. I am the founder of Produce. Uh, we operate an indoor hydroponic farm here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we grow all sorts of fruit, vegetable, herbs, and we do it in our indoor hydroponic uh, garden system. We provide the plants where people can actually do the same thing that we do here at the farm at home. Uh, so that's, in a nutshell, what we do. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, we were talking about before the uh, podcast started was, you know, how did you get started and why did you get started? You was telling me your story. It's almost identical to, to mine. Quite honestly, I've always been a, a grower uh, since being a kid, you know, growing up in middle Georgia in a rural area with my parents, we always had a garden and I, I loved it ever since being a kid. And it stuck with me throughout, you know, my years through college or whatever else. And I, I came across, you know, the frustration of not being able to grow my own food. And for me, it was just my favorite foods and to be able to do it year round. And I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be something that you can do to where, you know, you could grow, I don't know, watermelon or basil or something without the limitations of the seasonality. I'm sure you understand that. Yes, definitely, definitely. Exciting information. I'm going to back up just a little bit because I realize that there may be people who are listening or watching this who don't know what hydroponic gardening is. So, Greg, give us a, a lesson, if you would, on what hydroponic gardening is and why is it, I guess this is my opinion, better than growing in soil. Yeah, absolutely. So the easiest way I explain it, Denise, hydroponics, that's the method of growing plants, produce, or any type of um, um, plant, if you will, without the use of soil in a nutrient-filled water. That's it. There's no soil. There's no dirt. All of the nutrients the plants need are in the, the water. Um, and that's all hydroponics is broken down into. There's you know a number of different methods of hydroponics uh, and, and ways that you can grow it. But in a very basic term for understanding, it's just growing food without uh, soil or dirt and nutrient dense water. Okay. And so your business specializes in that, of course. And how do you help individuals become hydroponic gardeners? Um, so I started, you know, my business as um, selling wholesale to restaurants. And uh, we operate like a 2,400 square foot indoor farm, a hydroponic farm. And then the pandemic happened. And so we were, we were stuck. Uh, pretty much everybody was stuck inside. All of my business completely came to a, a halt, like overnight, literally. And you know, we had all these plants and we were trying to figure out, well, what in the world do we do with these plants and how can we make good use of them? And since we were all in home, 
at home, you know, we were like, all right, let's figure out how we can have people grow indoors the exact same way we do here at the farm, but in their homes. So we started tinkering around and we came up with a system that allows people to do it, you know, quite easily. And, you know, it's nothing new in terms of um, hydroponic systems that are on the market. But one of the things that we wanted to do was take away the the intimidation factor of getting started, take away the the how to's. And we wanted to do all of that for people. And so we came up with a product, we call it the Grow Block, and it does just that. It's a, a indoor vertical hydroponic system that's fully automated that lets people grow produce at ease without any expertise. We're the expert. We actually grow the plants for you, and we just ship live plants to our customers. Wow. Okay. So you've taken out the whole issue of getting seeds and starting them and the 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 medium the plant meat all of that you you send the actual plant we absolutely absolutely we we take away the any expertise that's required <laughs> we take away all the failures we do all that stuff in house here at the farm we we grow from seed in the medium uh we use rock wool and we ship plants that are at least six weeks old to our customers that have already started sprouting and, you know, mature plants. Mm -hmm. it, so, so have you found that the rock wool is the best medium for, um, for, for growing the, or starting the seeds, the seed starter? For, for us, it is. And the reason uh, I say that there's, there's a number of different mediums that are out there. You've got the, um, uh, the the pellets, you've got cocoa core, you've got perlite, you've got all sorts of mediums that, you know, you can grow plants in. For us, because of how our system is designed, the rock wool, it's a square cube that fits per perfectly in the pods that go with our system. So um, it's not the only way to do it. You know, there's a number of ways that you can do it. But for us, we found that uh, it minimizes a lot of the the disease and some of the bacteria and things that can, you know, kill plants in their plant roots and things like that. Right. There's a lot of things to consider uh, when it comes to growing hydroponics. It's not just a matter of of just throwing the water in and and throwing the the seeds in and and having it grow, you're concerned with with the safety of of what you're growing as well. So that's that is absolutely wonderful. So now, Greg, you've shared so much with us about how your business changed and kind of gravitated towards helping the individual. Uh, do you still assist or do you still sell to restaurants as well? We don't. We we oh, shifted right. our entire <laughs> business model because. Yeah. For us, um, you know, I'm I'm the type of individual. How can I help somebody? How can I, in any in a way that you know is beneficial to them? So it's more like a lifestyle change, and part of that is just not, you know, a system that we're selling to you and washing our hands, and you're stuck on your own, and we'd say good luck. You know, it's a lifestyle change, and a lot of people there's a big amount of education behind growing your own food and, and doing it year round, but also understand the nutrients behind the types of foods that you're growing, how that can impact your life in a positive way. So for me, that's fulfilling. Um, I still have restaurant customers that have transitioned with us. And so they have grow blocks in their restaurants as opposed to us providing wholesale food to them on a weekly basis. Now they grow their own. Oh, so that's that's been a, a a nice transition for us. That is an amazing concept there for the restaurants to be able to grow their own because I've seen some restaurants even where I'm at I'm in Sumter South Carolina and I've seen some restaurants planting their own gardens because they're growing their own uh, gardens and in soil that is but I I'm not familiar with anyone 
actually um, having a hydroponic garden and growing their own vegetables, which is a phenomenal idea that you've taken a pivot, not only in your business and your clients that you serve, but you're also taking a pivot to help businesses shift their minds in how they provide fresh produce for their customers. And that is awesome. There's nothing better than fresh produce. You can tell the difference once you start. I mean, if it, if people are who are listening to this are like me, uh, who who just love fresh produce, and and I'm sure Greg, you're the connoisseur of being able to detect detect freshness in in produce. But just once you have tasted fresh produce, it's hard to go back. I, I bought um, a store bought wrapped lettuce one time. And I couldn't finish it because I noticed the difference so much. It was just too different. The taste was just so different. So tell me this, Greg, when you're looking at hydroponic gardening, what kinds of issues or what are the main issues in addition to safety that you're concerned with when growing uh, that that fresh crop? What, what's important when growing hydroponics for the individual at home? Uh, for for us, it is just that it is safety. Safety number one. There there's a number of factors that can lead to an unhealthy plant, um, and it starts with the root structure. It's, you know, there's always pests. Uh, a lot of people will ask, well, I've heard that you know you don't get pests with indoor hydroponics. Well, that's that's not true. You will get some, but you won't get as much. It is a controlled environment. Uh, but for us, it's it's the the safety and then the nutritional content, the density of um, the nutritional value. Those are very very important for us. And so we help educate people on the different benefits of uh, growing your own food. But not only that, you know, from an environmental standpoint, you know, you're not wasting food. You know, you're you're growing and you're harvesting what you use. Um, we've all, you know, like, as you said, use the, gone to the grocery store and, and purchased the rat lettuce or, you know, herb leaves in the package container. And then it sits there and turns to mush and then we, we have to toss it. Right. You know, so that that's a waste. Yeah. That's um, right. So we help educate people on how to harvest the proper ways of maintaining your plants inside your system to where, again, you're not feeling like you're left alone. Right. That's excellent. That support is excellent. Now, what would you say are the best crops for beginner hydroponics users? Because I have a feeling there may be some people who are going to look into this after hearing you talk about this. What, <laughs> what is your suggestion for the beginners starting out? What's the best crop for beginners? Um, lettuce is always a, a staple. You know, you, you can't kill a lettuce plant. Well, you can but it's easy to start, you know, hydroponic, uh, hydroponically. Lettuce is a good one. Um, herbs like chives or basil, um, those are pretty easy to, to you know, you, you'll start getting in trouble when you look at fruiting plants, types of fruiting plants like peppers and tomatoes and strawberries, different things that require different pH levels and a different growing environment, but you, you're always solid if you try a lettuce green. Okay. Excellent. And, and what would lighting, um, how does that play in? Because with hydroponics, since you are growing indoors, the sunlight, the natural sunlight may be limited. So how do you compensate for the sunlight issue with hydroponics? That's a good question, Denise. So you have to compensate uh, with natural sunlight, with a uh, full spectrum lighting. Uh, the best way I explain that it's full spectrum lighting is the best um, the best supplement to natural lighting. So it has a different light rays, the spectrum that the sun does. In a full spectrum light, it almost mimics the sun. So the plants, they really don't know the difference if you're using a, a full spectrum lighting. And you have to you have to use ones that provide enough output of that full spectrum light that the plants can absorb uh, the energy that it needs to grow. Wow. 
I, I, I hear some um, words to live by in what you said. You were talking about lighting for plants, but it, it sounds like we can apply that in some other ways uh, as Absolutely. well <laughs> in spiritual Absolutely. growth too. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you this because you, you said you help individuals with, um, with the hydroponic gardening. What other kinds of educational um, support do you have? Um, because I know you have a podcast and I want you to be able to share about your podcast as well, but how else do you support your hydroponic gardeners? So we offer uh, monthly tours to the farm. Uh, we talk about hydroponics, but one of the things I like to really help people understand is this is just one part of a lifestyle change. Okay. You know, if you're interested in controlling your food source or growing your own food, uh, that's great. And we talk about hydroponics 101. And we also talk about if you don't do it using a grow block system, we will show you simple methods of just using basic things that you probably have around your house. Or if you don't, you can very easily pick it up at the uh, local you know, Home Depot or, or Lowe's or something like that. It's, it's not something that can't be done. Uh, is it daunting? It can be, but you can simplify it. And as much as we talk at hydroponics, you know, I answer traditional gardening questions too, because the key is being able to, as you stated early, uh, earlier, growing food, you get a much better taste and quality a much better nutritional value in what you're eating. So that that's what really matters. Wow, that is excellent. And and please share your podcast information as well so that uh, the listeners and viewers can learn more uh, about the hydroponic gardening process. Yeah, so our, our podcast is called Grow It Greg. And um, don't let the title fool you. We talk to people that are in different parts of life that are doing really cool and interesting things. And I like, like you, Denise, we like to highlight the, the fact that, you know, there's a message in that communication. And we try to highlight some of the things that people are experiencing in their lives that will help someone else grow. So uh, it's, a, it's a play on words where you may think grow at Greg means all right, gardening and stuff like that. But it, it's more connected to how other people have either transitioned their lives or in the process of transitioning their lives and how you can take those nuggets by listening to some of our guests and apply it to your own life. Wow. And, and we'll that, sprinkle in some hydroponic talk, you know, <laughs> or some type of growing or something like that. But for the most part, it's it's just really cool people that I have the opportunity to talk to that I absolutely love. And we just have real good conversations. Excellent. And that's what this podcast is about, pivoting. And it sounds like that's what you're talking about as well. People who are making a pivot and not only just in the way they're eating, but just in the their perspectives, their, their life uh, perspectives. How has this influenced your your faith and your life perspective in what you do? It, it's it's a daily walk and journey, you know. It, and it's you know growing from a seed, you know that's that's talked about a lot in you know biblical and other religious aspects, if you will. But it's very applicable to your daily walk, you know. The, when you stop growing, you die, just like a plant. When it stops growing, it's dead. But you have to have a source, you know, which is the same type of for a plant, the root source. Well, that root source has to be connected to fertile ground and soil. And there's a lot of different messages that I personally have adopted that, you know, it applies in my life. You know, it applies to the different ways I've grown and how I can identify if there's a healthy plant that I can take a look at and ways that I've personally grown too, where I can look at parts of my own life that may not may or may not be healthy. And um, it's I'm fortunate to be in the opportunity to have the opportunity and be in a position that I'm in to share my story with other folks. Excellent. So it sounds like you have really been able to make that pivot in your faith. And not only that, but to also have your faith strengthened 
through what you do and how you help others. That's right. That's exactly that, it. That is wonderful. Now, Greg, please share your website and any other information that you'd like for the viewers or listeners to receive to learn more about you. Okay. So our website is Produced for All. That's Produce with a D, P R O D U C E D, for all, all spelled out, uh, dot com. And um, we have a podcast, of course, is Grow It Greg, that we have guests. Uh, we also have a newsletter that we put out where we're sharing different articles about growing food, about you know current events sometimes. So um, we encourage anybody who's interested in just, you know, growing period, you know, to, you know, sign up as one of our uh, subscribers to, to receive our newsletter. Um, I answer questions, any questions, if I have to answer, I'll, I'll share it. I'm an open book. Um, people say that's sometimes a fault of mine because I share a lot. Um, but it's, if, if I can help others, that's what I'm here for. And that's what I really enjoy. So Go to our website. You can take a look at our grow block. You can see how it works. You can understand uh, more about hydroponics at our website. And of course, my email contact information is there as well. So uh, if you're interested, drop me a line. I'd love to chat with you. Excellent. That newsletter I did not know about, so I'll be signing up for that. But that that is absolutely wonderful news and, and wonderful information. And thank you so much, Greg, for sharing your time and your expertise in this podcast episode to enlighten everyone about the joys and the advantages of hydroponics. And lastly, what advice would you give, whether it's um, biblically based or based on your faith or based on your experience, what advice would you leave for people who are wanting to make a change in the way that they are are growing or, or or obtaining their food and maybe they want to try this what advice would you give um real simple advice you know start small you know take one step at a time i i was listening to an a, a, a article or show this morning and a young lady was telling her story about climbing a mountain and she said you know mountains are climb one step at a time and we've all heard that before, but that's that can be applied to any aspect of life and growing. Don't start big, start small, you know, one step at a time. When you're trying to start a garden, whether it's hydroponically or traditionally in dirt, you know, don't go so big, you know, don't, you know, try one plant at a time, understand what it takes to to nurture and to grow one plant and then move to the next. Um, so those are steps that are applicable to, to life in general. Just take one step at a time. Excellent. Thank you, Greg, for your motivation, your inspiration, and for all that you're doing to help people become uh, self-sustaining and being able to help them grow their own produce. But thank you, Greg, for your time and sharing your expertise in today's episode. Thanks for having me, Denise. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to the Pivot by Faith podcast. Please know how much your prayers and support for this podcast are appreciated. If you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to leave a review and let me know what you enjoyed and what touched your spirit today. Be sure to visit my website at denisenixon.com to learn more about the podcast guests and to receive notifications of new podcast episodes and special video clips that you'll find when you subscribe to the Pivot by Faith YouTube channel. And to all of my fellow entrepreneurs out there, remember, you've got this because God has got you. Peace, grace, and blessings to all. Keep praising God Almighty in the name of Jesus. And let's connect again with the next episode of Pivot by Faith. Take care.